Hey everyone, this is our, I don't know if it was a weekly, I don't know the cadence of this meeting, but uh, to go over localized blog publishing. Um, so I don't know what the cadence was. <laughs> is it weekly? Uh, I monthly? think we got three of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So fluid. Um, but yeah, uh, Lauren, do you want to go ahead with the first point? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to add functionality I18N that enables y'all to publish blog posts in other languages. That will mean we'll have our localized navigation system, we'll have a language selector in the bottom, and that will display if a blog post is available in a different language. And we're also going to introduce the ability to publish non-English only blog posts. So let's say we have a French blog post only um, and able to publish that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen show you where we are at. We have introduced the ability feature. So here is our first localized blog post. It was a really small blog post. It's just this wallpaper. Uh, and as we can see, we've got the nav down here in French. We've got the nav up here in French. Um, and it's just the image. Uh, so you can see how this works there. We went with field level localization. So if the field is localizable, there will be um, that equivalent in a different language. So you can see here's a blog post, GitLab wallpaper, English title, GitLab wallpaper, and then the French title, GitLab French name. <laughs> and we have German and Japanese options here. And as we go down, we can see that structure is repeated. So English, French, German, Japanese, authors. There's only one because the, the name of the author stays the same depending on what um, language they are, I believe. Um, we've got the slug, which remains the same. And then we've got our body content. And so that is the the basis of where we are right now. Um, I'll open it up to, yeah, Ola. For question okay. for people who do not write blogs on Contentful uh, from, from people. So what I'm looking at is the entry, right? When you said fields, yeah. this is a GitLab wallpaper entry. I can tell from the URL and the fields are what? Those uh, title, 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 where the language uh, is specified. Are those fields? Yeah, they're fields. Okay. They are fields. So if we come down to the body here, it's just the image. That's going to be hard to see because it's just the same. We could do the title. You know, here's the title. And there's the, Eng the French title. We come down to the bottom. We can see that there's only the English version available. And there's the English version. Uh, Nathan. Nathan. One thing I just wanted to point out is uh, now we see all the fields for English, French, German, Japanese. You know, as we scale this, there, there might become more languages. But on that contentful entry on the right hand side, uh, you'll notice that there's a, a way to toggle, um, you know, which languages you want to see. So maybe you're only updating Japanese. So maybe you only want to see the English and Japanese versions. Or are you doing French? You only see English version or English or French. So it, it cleans it up a bit. Um, so you're not having to see four times of every field when you're potentially publishing a blog post. What? Right, thank you. The other day I didn't see the other locales there, uh, like a while ago, not the other day, and I couldn't figure out how to add that. But you don't say, you don't click add, you click change, and then you add. I have a question, but I don't know where to raise my hand here. <laughs> so I will ask that. Uh, now, um, I was wondering, like, for the slug, would it be possible to... Um, uh, being able not to update it at all, like because you were saying that we are keeping the slug, like to block the the slug so that nobody can update it. Um, because I know that mm. it can happen when we're managing like different languages, like we create, we start from the English and then we want to have like the French and Japanese and German uh, version. It could happen even if like it, we are pretty c careful about this, but I was wondering if we could like uh, uh, find a way not to be able to 
touch that. You took the words right out of my mouth, Maude. That was exactly <laughs> what I was just afraid of. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, here we yeah, go. Yeah, it can be a mess very pretty quickly, even if like it's not uh, intentionally our <laughs> purpose, right. but it can happen. So that would be great if we can like just have a way not to be able to push, to, like to touch that. Yeah, we can do that. Or we can put it behind permissions. So, you know, if it does need to be changed, then someone could go in and change it. Um, that's not a problem at all. Just one thing to note is that all that localization happens in the code. So even though it doesn't show FRFR or JPJP JP, in code, we're, we're turning that into French and Japanese. So um, what you're seeing is just the, I guess, the end slug. Um, but yeah, we can we can definitely lock that down. Actually, permissions might be better because I can definitely see a time where you know we need to do something with the headline for some reason. You know, you know when you change the headline and sometimes it. I guess you wouldn't want to change the slug, but yeah, permissions would be good. Nice. Good discussion. Um, Wait, but that leads me to a question. This rarely, right. rarely happens, but let's just say for some reason we need to change the headline late. I don't know why we would, but let's just say we did. Um, would that mess up? all the localization and can we make sure there's a way it doesn't it won't um affect localization it just would mean all those localized blog posts would also change okay um uh, urls yeah change urls okay or change slugs like if you changed it from i don't know hello to hello sandra uh, it'll be like jp jp hello sandra now so all the like the the slug is not um, locale specific. The slug is shared across all four languages. Huh. And would it be possible not to like touch the slug? Because, f for example, I know that for um, on an SEO point of view, we I'm pretty sure we will like make some SEO optimization sometimes on the title. Yeah, that's and what so, I was thinking. Of. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a miscommunication here. We can update the headers and the titles however we want, will not affect the slug. The slug is its own field. We'll lock that down. So once it's in there, you can't change it. With permission, you can, but you can change the headers. Now, that's kind of where our Argo integration will come in so that if the English source changes right let's say the the title and the, the content totally changes argo will be able to recognize that that's changed and fire off an automated translation process and they have they need to get it over there off to our, our tsm their language people translate it send it back and then dump it back into contentful and that's the the next part actually that we're Wait, can we hold up one on. sorry lauren yeah. It actually, just as an FYI, when I do change the headline, it does change the slug. Yeah, that was yes. us trying to be fancy. Yes. Um, but yes. we can, we can remove does. that fanciness. <laughs> it does. It changes the slug. I just had it happen on a oh. this morning. I changed it, which you want it to do as you're, when you're in the edit function, I can see why this, before you've had a published version of it, I can see why this is, a good thing like I changed the headline let's say from guided tour to take a guided tour right the slug becomes take a guided tour once I change the headline which is why you can't reuse the preview link either when you change the headline so yeah so that's something to be aware of once we publish something maybe we could also just remove that for now if that's safer what do you mean? Like the uh, the automatic updating of the slug. I'm not sure it's a bad thing when I'm messing with the mm. headlines because I do want them to change with me because I'm never going to remember. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not bad when I'm in edit mode because I play around with the headline constantly. But the only concern is like you're going to be affecting other potential localized blog posts. So yeah. I don't know if we have to redirect you know, those as well. Cause maybe you publish something in Japanese on LinkedIn and then we change the headline slug gets automatically updated. And now that that link is broken. Yeah. 
we can think I, this through. I think not having that automated is the the efficient way from the, the tech standpoint. And once you decide like what that real headline is and what you know the slug should be, you can update that as as needed. But I I worry about that automation, especially when we're potentially gonna have three plus more versions of a blog post now linked to an English version. Okay. What does changing the slug do to SEO? Uh, does that matter? How much? Um, it, it only matters in the sense that you're almost publishing a new link again, I believe, right? So, which is why you don't want to do it that often is because you get rid of all that authority you've built up. So I wouldn't do it in an old post unless we absolutely had to. I guess I'm just yeah. thinking more near term when we start to become more real time in if I publish something and you want to take it for localization right away. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to work I, that mod. I know with the like the slugs, it's important to keep them because, for example, on an SEO point of view, we create a lot of internal linking. And so uh, if we like add a link and then the link is not available, mm. we are going to have four to four errors. So that's why I think we like it's important to if we start as in, like from English to like for localized content, maybe to, to keep the like the first URL and then keep it uh, whenever like updates we make, because I know that we on my side, I will be using a lot of those URLs for um, internal linking. And if we like update the headline and that the slug uh, is updated too, we are going to have like a lot of errors. So, okay, so let's just lock it down. Mm -hmm. Actually, can we lock it down with permit? Just I can see the rare exception where it yeah. would need to be fixed. Well, there's cases where we just publish something and then you realize, oh no, I don't like that. And you know, yeah. before it even hits the internet, you want to just yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we can do that. Okay, sorry, Lauren, we derailed you. No, that that's a really good discussion. And I'm I'm glad we, we came down to the the decision there, locked down with permissions to change as needed. Um, I'm gonna move over to number two. Um, and this is that next step I was talking about integrating Argo with our blog and template space so we can get some automation in with the getting our translated blog posts in there. And just kind of like a FYI, we're gonna test the first round trip with Argo with a Japanese blog post. Uh, that Megumi has selected, it'll be that one. Um, and we're we're actively working with Kevin and Spartan right now to get that set up. And as always, like it's a big thing. So there's going to be some iterations we're going to need to do after we have that first round trip test. I just want to clarify what Argo is for. Yeah. Uh, Argo is the router that sends files back and forth to human translators or to translation systems. What we use it for is this translation. So if you have a blog post in English and it needs to be translated, that's why where Argo sends the content to translation and back and creates a field, puts it in the field of Jap Japanese. In cases where blog needs to be written original in French or in Japanese, there's no translation. Argo doesn't come into the picture. That's another flow. A third one is when something is translated from English into Japanese, but then the Japanese content manager or French content manager mod needs to tweak it so much that it becomes non-equivalent anymore to English. And that's where translation workflow stops. So we need to think about three flows in the future for content for multilingual content management, not purely translation. It could be one, either translation from English or creating original or trans creating the translated version. This is, by the way, nicely described. And thank you, Maud and Megumi, for putting it into the... Um, I'll share it in chat. And Lauren, can you please 
just put it into where it belongs in the agenda. There's a issue with uh, content manager requirements, and they, they describe it describes the user stories of of these use cases when the translation needs to happen or when the translation doesn't need to happen. Just as a side note, I created a localization um, channel for Maud Megumi and I. Do you all want in there just in case there's something that happens that maybe you think, oh, crap, we have to do something contentful wise to support that as well? Is that a private channel? Yeah. And I would recommend um, closing that channel and using a public channel. Okay. Um, Wait, is there is a public like, localization private. channel already. Oh, it is. It is a private channel. Okay. There is a localization channel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, where? Oh, yeah. Localization blog content. Is that the one you're talking about? That's it. Nope. That, That's that could be one. Um, here, I'll get the link to. I would be hesitant to to put everything in that localization channel just because I know I think that's Olex teams <laughs> like yeah working that channel is big I mean it's for anyone needing support on anything with localization so if you like if having very specific blog discussions in there that get pretty technical with uh, contentful team with digital experience team maybe a bit too much also vendors our translation partners yeah, no. are, are there no, that's not what this is. This mm -hmm. is more just the three of us just wanted a space like where we can chat about what we want to um, localize or when we get further in, you know, like just that we can talk. My only question was if you all need to be in there for some reason that I didn't think about. It's up to you. Yeah. I have a strong preference for public channels, so and everyone I can, can have local, access. Then yeah. I can make it localization content public, like shut this one down, make one localization public, but then do you want in there more? I mean, do you sure. want me to ask you as a member? Sure. Yeah, that'd be good. And well, make we'll it an access network. request for our contractors to get added to there. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying, right? I'd have to start over with them, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me sh shut this one down. I'm archiving it and I'll create a new one. Yeah, for a mod, because mod, you're external. You know, to add you to a channel, uh, we need an access request. Megumi is uh, not external, so she can just be added. Okay, let me do channel. All right, keep going, you guys, sorry. I'll pass it over to Nathan, talk about number three, and then let's also want to make sure we have time for number four. Yeah, I'll share my screen here. Make sure I got the right one open. Google Chrome. I think it's this one. Why is it showing the wrong? Uh... There, one second. <laughs> I don't know why sometimes it doesn't update. There we go. Perfect. Um, yeah, so just a heads up, Contentful is releasing a new version of uh, their localization kind of platform tool. Um, and so right now, when you publish a change, you're sharing a draft state with all the other locales. So if someone were to go into the, the French title and make a change, um, if now I go and I want to change something in English and I hit publish, that French content will get pulled as well. So right now, it's kind of like a Google Doc. It's one shared draft state uh, between all locales. Coming in, they said spring, so I, I'm not going to give a timeline. Uh, they're going to allow for locale-specific publishing. So when you click publish, instead of publishing everything in draft, you get to pick and choose like what locales you want to publish. Uh, it's going to be extremely powerful in the next couple months when we start to, to build out these blog posts and other locales. Um, any questions around that one? That async field publishing is going to be huge for us. Yeah. It's be great. Yeah game changer. <laughs> I'm really nervous right now at the, you know, someone's working on English, someone goes into French and then all of a sudden they have a shared draft state and they're like, I don't want to publish someone else's content. So Maybe I, I, I have a question regarding like the different languages. Like we were talking about like from English to like French, Japanese, etc. But I know with that with Megumi, we are working on new content re relating yeah. to the same topic. So I guess that uh, the idea would be that if we are covering the same 
topic in our own languages, the best strategy would be to start from like French or Japanese, and then we have the French or Japanese version after. That would be the um, your advice on this. Yeah, for blog posts that are that are related, um, I would kind of put them together in okay. like one blog post. If the content is completely separate, then uh, sorry, my dog's whining. Um, you can add a new blog post and then I'll show how to go through this process, but you can publish with only like one specific language. So if you only want French or only want Japanese, you can still publish yeah. that Japanese okay. blog post. But yeah, if there's, I would just create one probably, yeah, you'd have to chat within each other. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will, I will like have a, a more <laughs> yeah. strategy uh, process with a strategic process with, Meg with Megumi. Like we can agree on like who goes first, but it's just to, um, to know what was your advice on this. Yeah. That's a cool note, Ma. Uh, so it's uh, like translation between French and Japanese where no English is involved, but it's still translations in some cases. So we may be plugging Argo into that. Uh, if there's no user story for that on the content manager requirements issue, let's add one. Okay? I can add. Yeah, yeah I will add this. That. Thank you. That's a really good point. <laughs> I never thought about multi-locale with no English. Yeah. I know uh, that with the the content agency we're working with right right now, they're like uh, we selected the kind of same SEO keywords. So I'm like I don't know yet if we're going to have the same plans, but it can happen. Uh, so that's why I was <laughs> I was asking. All right, we're at time, but I really want to see this the way that we publish blog posts um, that don't have the English equivalent. So show us where you're at with that, Nathan. Yeah, I can go quick. Uh, unfortunately, this process isn't isn't pretty. Um, we spoke with Contentful, and this is a common solution that other companies have uh, when trying to publish a specific locale uh, and not the default language, so in this case, English. So the solution that, that people come up with is just putting a special character in the required fields. We can change a special character. We can probably add some logic around it. But right now we just have a pound sign. And so if you're creating a blog post in that doesn't have English, just in the English required fields, uh, just a pound sign is, is perfect. Um, and then you can add in your, your French content. Um, the only two required fields that you'd have to do this for are the blog body and the title. Um, so that's the only nuance right now that we have. We're gonna try and iterate on this and make sure you don't have to put that in. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, Two pound signs. <laughs> I have a question if, if it's possible, like if like yeah. 30 seconds. Um, when we like from what you're saying, it means that your advice would be to have the slogan English, I guess, because if we have the slogan Japanese or in French, it's going to be a mess at some point. It could be in a, yeah, that's the thing too. I, hmm. Like, I don't know how slugs, this is maybe I'm not even, I don't know how slugs work in other languages. Uh, okay. I'd be really curious to know. Partial, uh, that there are top level domains in other languages, uh, but partial, I don't know what that does to SEO. Like, when you probably pose a question to the SEO team about that. Yeah. And in terms of SEO, uh, we pull in, so for example, this title is pulled in the SEO title. This description is pulled in as the SEO description. Uh, I think there's an image field somewhere that gets pulled into, you know, the page image uh, when you post it on social media or something. So there's no specific SEO section. It's just pulled in from the content that you fill out. If there's a need to have a designated SEO section, then we can implement that. Uh, we just found that this was sufficient to just pull from the content that we've already written. Yeah, and we don't do top level domains in non-English, by the way, it's just saying. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the slug would always be English. Um, yeah, I think that's it for my, I muted myself instead of stop sharing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those days, <laughs> but I think we're almost at time. So is there any kind of closing remarks or questions, concerns? Uh, if not, I look forward to seeing everyone in the next one. I just have a quick question, of course, um, just on timing wise. And if I'm working in something and, uh, the localization team is working on something, well, let's let's put this on the agenda for next one. Like, okay. what's our rhythm as far as mm. you know who's who's working in what? 
you have to be oh, their, their calendars i think mod you're maintaining like or will be maintaining a big uh, content calendar for French. Yeah, I have created uh, an issue with my content calendar, but uh, I'm keeping a, like uh, a look on <laughs> Sandra's agenda too. <laughs> so uh -huh. yeah, we'll find a way with uh, Sandra with you uh, how we could best work together on this. Sounds good. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye.